Friday. Good morning. Uh, no, good evening. You see, I get all my days mixed up, hours and everything else. So good evening. Good to see you. You can tell I've been in church all week, can't you? But anyway, it's good to be here. Amen. God blessed us with another beautiful day. Another opportunity to be back in the house of God. We've had a tremendous week. I hope you've been able to catch some of it, or all of it, or part of it. It's just been, even though we've been under, it's been a little different. But, uh, you know, God's always the same. Amen. And so uh, uh, God is never different. He's always the same. And so it's been good, and it's been a great week, and preaching's been good, and we've just had a good time. And, uh, and we, then we've got uh, Brother Ron with us tonight. He's going to be bringing the message. Got some more videos. And uh, so it's going to be a good night tonight. How many's come expecting a good night tonight? Amen. If we expect that God gives it, amen, we can take it home and rejoice. Amen. So good to see you. All right, we're going to sing. So if you'll stand, uh, and you should have the words, to my Savior's love. So let's stand together and sing tonight. How wonderful. Amen. Nothing greater than uh, the love of God tonight. Praise the Lord for that. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I do want you to pray, especially tonight, for Brother Larry Spangler. Uh, I talked to um, uh, Melanie today, 
And uh, of course, Melanie is heartbroken. Uh, things not looking good for Brother Larry. And so uh, they do have him on the ventilator again. And so let's remember him and his family. Uh, he's in Charleston, so let's pray for them uh, today. And then on, on a, uh, we go to some good news. I talked to Oscar Justice today, and uh, they said if things keep progressing as they're going, Carolyn can come home Monday. Amen. Amen. So she is up walking and doing much, much better and eating well and, and all those good things. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. So let's continue to pray for her. And Judy Hall, Juanita said that she was not feeling well today and has had a couple of rough days. And so remember her. She's under hospice care at home. So let's pray for her tonight. Anybody else tonight before we go to prayer? Yes, sir. Carden? Okay. Okay, remember the Carden family. Roger Wiley, yes, pray for Brother Roger Wiley, yes, okay, okay, Maggie, Mildred Walker, okay, Mike Butler, and pray for Betty, Betty McKinney, Brian Davis, okay, remember that prayer request, anybody else, okay, pray for Sue, Sue's facing some testing coming up next week, so Let's pray for Sue Shin tonight. Let's for uh, God to touch. Then I know we got others. Uh, uh, Joyce Meadows needs our prayers. And we need to remember her tonight. And Alan Lois, we saw Al today. And, uh, and so we need to remember Alan Lois, Kim Keaton as well, fighting this cancer. Yeah. Got a lot to pray about, don't we? Got a lot to be thankful for. God's been still good to us, helped us, and he continued to pray for our nation. Boy, especially our leadership. Oh, my. Uh, needs our prayer. And then we pray for this local church and other local churches yes. uh, in this difficult day in which we live. And as I've been telling you, we need to pray for this uh, bill that's coming before the Senate. I don't know when that is, but it's soon. And uh, uh, so we need, uh, we need for them to kick that out. Amen. Yes. So it needs to be kicked out. And so it begins with us. And so let's, uh, let's join together and pray. Uh, that, that God will kill that thing. That's the Equality Act that they're trying to put through. And uh, uh, so let's just be a prayer to that effect. All right, let's pray for our speaker tonight, Brother Ron, and, and for his, their ministry, help ministry. You know, it's been a difficult time for missionaries and, and organizations that help uh, missionaries. But aren't you glad God's faithful? Yes. How, well, we've heard that those messages this week, haven't we? And it's exactly right. He is. Uh, we're the ones that lose it. God never loses it. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, praise the Lord for that. So let's, let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Our Father, which art in heaven, God, we come before you tonight. Thankful, Lord, for another opportunity. Together in the house of God, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for these that are gathered here tonight with us. And, Father, we ask you to bless them for being in the house of God. And those that are listening, by the way, of live stream, we ask for a blessing for them wherever they are as well. And we thank you, God, for a place together and a promise that when we gather, you'll gather with us. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for this week, Father, where we've been fed and we've been blessed and we've just had a good time in the house of God and, and we've uh, our hearts have been touched by missions. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that. And we thank you, Lord, for being so faithful, uh, even through times of difficulties and hard times. Lord, you've never failed us and you never will fail us. And, Father, we just pray you'll help us, Lord, to um, keep our senses about us, and Lord, to stay in the word of God and be faithful to what you have told us to do. And Father, we uh, pray, Father, tonight for this meeting, the preaching of God's word, and Lord, these uh, uh, missionaries that we'll see by the way of video, and we ask you, Lord, to meet their need. I know many missionaries around the world are suffering today, but God, you're, you're faithful, and you know where they are. And I'm glad, as the preacher said last night, I'm glad he knows my name, and uh, I'm glad he knows where I'm at, I'm glad he knows what I need, and we just thank you, God, you know us, uh, you know us so well. And Father, we ask you to bless these that's been uh, mentioned by the way of prayer tonight. Lord, we want to pray for Brother Larry especially. You'll touch him tonight, Father, in a mighty way, and for Melanie, Lord, comfort her, Father, and give her comfort, and, and uh, Kitty and the family, Lord, help them tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good news on Carolyn. We ask you, Lord, to continue to help her, Lord, as she might get home. And we pray for Judy uh, tonight, Lord, suffering, ask for a peace for her and her family. 
We pray for um, uh, Joyce Meadows tonight. And Lord, these others have been mentioned, Mike Butler and Betty, Mildred Walker. We pray for that need. We pray for Sue tonight. She'll be facing some testing next week. We ask you, God, for good results. We pray, Father, for her. Pray for this family that lost their loved one, this Carden family. God, comfort them, Lord. And as only you can, you're the God of all comfort who comfort us, Lord, in all our tribulation. No matter what we may face, you have promised your comfort and help. Father, bless tonight. Save lost sinners. We pray for people that are lost tonight. God, that we just pray, Lord, that the word of God will reach them somewhere. And Father, pray for our nation. How it needs your help. Forgive our nation, God, of their sin. And Lord, help us, Father, to be a shining light in a dark, dark day. Bless this local church and other local churches still standing by the word of God. Lord, give us boldness, give us safety, give us peace. Thank you, Lord, for that peace that passeth all understanding. Bless tonight, Lord, the meeting we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Stacy's going to come tonight and sing a song for us. Uh, So you pray for Stacy as she comes.
that's what we need, isn't it? Laborers, people to go and work, willing to go and, and do the work that God has called us to do. We still have work to do. Amen. This thing's not over yet. Amen. Amen. And so there's still work uh, to do. So uh, we're going to sing another song, and we're going to turn Brother Ron loose. I want to remind you tonight that uh, uh, we, have, we have placed the faith promise cards out. Many folks have picked some up this week. If you haven't picked yours up, we'd encourage you to pick yours up and take it and pray over it. And uh, that's entirely, uh, entirely how we uh, uh, support our mission, missionaries here. And uh, through our faith promise that's been started with... In 1977, Faith Promise was started here. And I don't remember the amount. Do you remember the amount, Brother Glenn? We started out. We started about 20,000, I think. And now my, our last report was what? We, we're now over, over $100,000 a year in just mission support. Now, you see, that's how God works. Amen. I would challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you to try to outgive God. Try it. Uh, you'll never do it. So try it and see what happens. And so I would encourage you to pick up your faith promise cards, take them home, pray over them, uh, ask God, what will thou have me to do? And I guarantee he'll tell you. Uh huh. And if he tells you what he wants you to do, he intends on uh, making you able to do what he told you. You believe that? Amen. So pick them up. We're going to start Faith Promise Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, and uh, then we're going to carry that through the month of, of uh, April. Uh, there'll be nothing greater than in a time of pandemic we have the greatest faith promise we ever had. Amen. Is he able? Is he able? Amen. He is able to do so. All right, Stan, we're going to sing one more song. My Jesus, I love thee. Let's stand together and sing. Well, it's, it's been a great privilege 
this week to have these men um, uh, uh, help ministries with us, and it's always a blessing uh, to see them and and hear the preaching. And then uh, we we had we spent a lot of time. We did a lot of eating, and uh, you see that's the Baptist way. And uh, but uh, we uh, just had a good time, and and uh, we sure did enjoy the brothers down in Mexico, and. Uh, uh, I, I enjoyed just talking to him, and uh, he invited me to come to Mexico, and uh, so I might do it sometime. I ain't gonna do it right. I don't know that all them things he was telling. I ain't I'm sure about that. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, however, uh, we enjoyed having him with uh, with it, all of them with us. And now we're gonna have the man, Amen. And uh, it's good to have Brother Ron with us. Brother Ron, you come. Brother Ron Cole, let's go, Brother Ron. I'm Mary the Baptist Church. Welcome tonight. Well, good evening. It's good to be back in Maranatha. It's good to be back with you. And uh, is he able? <laughs> I was reminded of a verse of scripture that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, telling them that if they were to give, as God had laid on their heart, what God would do, what he's able to do. And this is what he said. And God is able. To make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Do you need anything else if you have that? I need nothing else if I have this. I've seen and witnessed God's goodness personally. I get to see it so often. I'm very privileged in this place God's put me to get to see it. We, uh, y'all spare bear with me. The 29th of uh, February, well, we didn't have a 29th this year. If we'd have had one, it would have been our 29th anniversary. And our son-in-law surrendered to the ministry a few years ago. We sang the song, Working in the Field, and we prayed God would use our kids, and he is, and it's a little harder than we thought it would be when they left and took our grandchildren. We are so thankful, so gracious that God is using them. They're in Oklahoma City. They're, while they're in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, our son-in-law is an Army chaplain. And we were out there for our, our grandson's fifth birthday was also the end of February. And he said, he told his mom, he said, I want to have a birthday party and I want to invite all my North Carolina friends. <laughs> and he's 20 hours drive from North Carolina. And, and so my daughter Autumn's trying to explain to Atlas. Now Atlas, you know, that they, they, they can't come. And he's naming off his friends and people and no, they can't come, they can't come, they can't come. <laughs> and he said, uh, it's all right. He said, it's all right. He said, honey and poppy will be there. And uh, we said, well, yeah, if you put it that way, I guess we will. <laughs> and so our anniversary, we said, well, let's just go out there. And we were getting ready to leave. We were coming back to the airport in Oklahoma City. We were going to fly out. And, uh, you know, we were already anticipating the goodbyes. And we sat down in a restaurant. It was a diner. We ordered, most of us ordered breakfast. It was one of those deals like Dolly's up here where you can order 24-hour breakfast. And uh, my daughter, my wife, me, and three grandkids. And I had two of them, on, one on each side, and my wife had the youngest one over there on her lap. And, and they were just, you know, talking a mile a minute, going to town. We ordered our food. Now, I've had this happen here. But the waitress come up, she said, the strangest thing, the strangest thing has just happened. She said, somebody has just paid for your whole meal in Oklahoma City, where I don't know anybody. But see, God is able. God is able to, you know what that did for us? We, we weren't even thinking anymore about you know, the separation and what we were, 
fixing to do. We were just thinking about the goodness of God. He just dropped that right there because it's what we needed. It wasn't the fact that we didn't have the money to pay for the bill. It wasn't that. It was the fact that God just cared and did something for us. And I know he cares for you. 2020, what a year. And we were, it was last year we were here. It was the Tuesday. It was a, actually almost a year from yesterday. The Tuesday morning I, I had got up that morning and thought that we were good. And then after spending some time with the Lord, about two hours later realizing that we needed to send all the guys home. And thank God we, we endeavored to do that. Some of the guys got there the day the airport shut down in their country. Some of them a, a couple days before. The guy from Brother Singh from Guyana was stuck here until July. And Brother Edgar Asuncion, who's a Filipino missionary to Cambodia, still hasn't made it back to Cambodia. Uh, we raised $20,000 to try to help him get there to pay the visa, but he still is yet to make it back to Cambodia. Folks have asked about the support. Was support down? Sure it was. Sure it was. In fact, we, uh, last year we were down uh, about $225,000 across the board, ministry-wide. You know what was pretty awesome? is this. In West Virginia, I checked the stats, I checked support and what states it comes in from. In, uh, in 2019, we received $410,000 total from just all over West Virginia, which is very good. West Virginia is the number three uh, supporting state that we receive support from. And guess what it was in 2020? Now you would expect it to have dropped, but it actually went up $20,000 to $430,000. Now, can you imagine in the midst of a pandemic that the support went up by $20,000? Now, that's a, that is a testament to the faithfulness of God and to the faithfulness of his people, you. So thank you. Thank you. I love, I love speaking well of West Virginians. And so now I just get to go brag to all the places that I go about how you guys do it up here in West Virginia. Amen. Well, we've got a couple videos I want to show this evening. Uh, these are two men from India. Uh, they're, they've recently graduated from Bible college, as they will share in their testimony. We weren't able to bring any of the men in this time. And uh, so I'm going to ask you guys, if you could, uh, I, I believe John Ramai is the first video. So if we could cue up John. And uh, he's a very short video. It's, it, bear with us. The video quality for this is not very good. These were shot on cell phones. We did not realize that COVID-19 was going to happen and that last year was going to be last year. We would have been more prepared, but we haven't been able to go there. They haven't been able to come here. So this is the best we can do. So if you could bear with us, uh, let's, let's see what uh, John has to say. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First of all, I want to give thanks to our living God who give me this privilege to share a short testimony to you all. My name is John Ramai. I'm from Manipur state of India. God blessed me with a wife and a daughter. I was born in 1983 and raised in a very loving Christian home. My father was pastor of my local church, but I was lost without Christ and became a heavy drunkard, a gambler, and a hopeless human. Everybody disliked me, hated me, and called me as one lost characterless person. My parents were disappointed and embarrassed because of me, yet they never gave up on me. My father prayed and preached the living gospel to me and on 20th of May 2011, I accepted Christ as my personal savior. Right away, I have decided to follow the Lord and preach the gospel to the unreached. Recently, I have completed MTH in Christian Apologetics from BGSTM, Dimapu, Nagaland. I would like to thank Dr. Peter Chimai who have given me an opportunity to be part of BGSTM and Bethlehem Baptist Church. I have been trained well to serve the Lord. I have learned many things, particularly soul winning and planting churches. I am on fire to plant Baptist Church and my love for the dying soul without Christ is keeping me to preach even in the nationwide lockdown. I am now in a mission field as a missionary and a church planter in Dipu, Karbialong, Assam. People here in this region are animistic Hindu. They practice black magic, worship the river, water, bird, etc. I have committed my life to serve the Lord here and my prayer is to plant 
churches in this region, please kindly pray for us as we preach the gospel and plant Baptist Church. Amen. Can everybody understand pretty much what he was saying? It actually sounded pretty good. It's the best. It's the best. It's really sounded out of listening to the video. So you guys have good, good quality sound system here. Uh, go ahead if you if you wouldn't mind then and key up uh, Rakesh Gupta, please. Also graduate of the same Bible college. Peter Tamai has a, a great work there. One of our men in northern India. And uh, so let's hear from Rakesh. My name is Rakesh Kumar Gupta. I was born and brought up in a Hindu Orthodox family and my father is a strict in Hindu and they hate uh, Christianity. And my father is a businessman, my mother is a housewife and two brothers they are also doing a business. My father is a well learned educated and well reputed in the town and they hate Christianity. They say that it is a foreign religion. I really thank my family that they have helped me in studying Bachelor of Commerce. As I, as I graduated in 2010, uh, I was working in marketing company and did some business as my job. As usual in 2014 at the end of December, I used to hang around with my childhood friend and I saw something different in his life and he became a Christian and he has accepted Jesus Christ and he shared me gospel for the first time I heard about Jesus Christ gospel good news and uh, he told me very little and he gave me a Bible tract to read John 3 16 and later on 2015 some of the church members they visited me and they share their life journey in Christ how they have changed how they have changed and forsaken the idolatries and uh, and I was believing that all God is same, but day by day I was learning and, and started knowing the differences uh, between them. And one day a preacher asked me, Rakesh, are you 100% sure if you die today, will you go to heaven? By hearing this question, uh, Holy Spirit convicted in my heart to accept Jesus Christ. At that point also, I was not yet converted. And as my parents, they live in an Indo-Bhutan area, my parents and one preacher came from Bethlehem Baptist Church, Dimapur, Nagaland, in Indo-Bhutan area, and he shared me Bible, shared from the Bible, the gospel, the good news, and Romans Road. And till that time also, I was not yet born again. And, uh, but in my heart, I was a curiosity to learn and I, I went hidingly to the Bible college and without telling anyone and uh, to know more about Jesus Christ. And as a Hindu, I, was go uh, I went to Bible college. And, and later on in 2015, July, in July, in the, I go, uh, when pastor was preaching the gospel about Jesus Christ, I... Uh, I, will rem I remember the date that the 17th July I kneeled down and I asked Jesus to come into my heart and I accepted Jesus Christ 100% and I surrendered my life and gave my life to Him. And on 2nd August 2015 I was baptized and after uh, college I came back in my home. My father was very angry with me and he told me that you have become a well-learned mad person. And he used to see all them in my pocket that uh, I used to carry a Bible tracts to give out to the people. And he, he was telling me that by giving a Bible tracts, uh, what you, you will, your stomach will be filled. And in this way, they did not help me and support me in, to study in Bible college. But thank God that, uh, he, uh, that God has helped me to contact with uh, Dr. Peter Thumai. And right now, uh, I am... Uh, I have finished my MTH in Master Theology from Baptist Graduate School of Theology and Mission in Dimapur, Nagaland, which is run by Dr. Peter Thumai. And he helped me to study there under work scholarship. And I also got engaged with a God-fearing girl and waiting, and waiting for my graduation. But due to lockdown, uh, 
pandem due to lockdown pandemic covid 19 uh, our graduation and marriage program has been postponed <clears throat> and right now at this point of time also i am right in mission field in siliguri and here i am teaching the children now there are around more than 60 children and visiting the houses and uh, telling about the love of jesus christ and my i know that god has called me to 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 be a church planter and uh, in uttar pradesh in lucknow and in uttar pradesh is a, a, a is a state where 200 million population is there and there is a there is a great persecution and challenges are there and in that uh, place there is 0.07% of christianity and uh, 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 and there is a great opportunity to share gospel also and please pray for me please, uh, and also for the souls in uttar pradesh and i will be not going home but i'll be going in mission field thank you greetings to you all name of amen amen thank you uh turn with me in your bibles to the book of exodus exodus chapter number 6 uh while you're turning there so rakesh is in a state of india called uh, andhra andhra pradesh and uh you might have heard him say that state has a population of over 200 million over 200 million in just the one state that he lives in and very very few christians a lot of persecution uh, a very difficult territory imagine if you took new york and florida and texas and california the big states here and you added all their popul- populations together it still wouldn't be as much as there is in that one state isn't that something and just very few people the song rings true there's not enough laborers there uh, we would look and assess and say to get the job done but they're training men and uh, so you pray for these men as they're in a very difficult area that God would uh, do a marvelous work in their lives and so thank you uh, i, I want to encourage you to continue giving to faith promise missions and pray and purpose in your heart uh, as to what God would have you to give There's no doubt he wants you to give. He does. And uh just pray. Say, "Lord, would you I I want to be involved in this or if you've been involved for years, just stay on the train. Don't jump off now." And uh and the Lord knows, and that's why it's so important to to really ask the Lord to help us purpose a figure because he knows what the future holds. He knows what we can give. We don't know. We might get a raise this year or we might take a pay cut this year. But the Lord knows. So please please uh continue on. Uh I want to talk tonight about God's plan of the ages. Exodus chapter number 6. If you're able would you stand with me as we look to the word of God? If you're not able certainly keep your seats, but if you could, if you could, it would be it would be a blessing. Exodus chapter number 6 and verse number 6. God is speaking to Moses here. He says, "Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a god and ye shall know that I am the Lord your god which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob and I will give it to you for an heritage I am the Lord father we ask you now to help us this evening Lord help me tonight I pray Lord that uh in the remaining moments that we have of this conference this meeting this revival missions revival Lord that you will once again uh open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for us that are here you'll use this book this precious word and the spirit of God will use the word of God to speak to our hearts to challenge us edify us encourage us or perhaps even convict us Lord give us that which we stand in need of it could be that there's one here tonight or or others that have never trusted you as lord and savior and i pray that you would even use this message tonight to speak to their heart and bring conviction to their soul and help them to 
get it right before they leave. This is the, this is the place. This is the hour. Today is the day of salvation. And we just thank you for the great testimony of this church, their love not only to our ministry and mission work, but to so many others, missionaries around the world. We pray your special blessings upon it now and upon this, this evening. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated, please. God's mission's plan. God's plan of the ages is to bring, is to have a group of people that are his. Is to, he, he certainly wants to, to have everyone that's ever been born to be one of those special group of his people, but there's a, he, he gives every person that's born the opportunity to decide for themselves if they want it or if they don't want it. If they want it, they don't get special privilege. They don't, uh, they're not escorted from the troubles and trials of life uh, to some other plane, to some other level. Oh, there's ways that we find ourselves on another plane at another level, but we still struggle with, uh, with everyone else. And uh, people in our family get COVID and, and die. As my wife had two family members here just a few weeks ago in the Logan County area of West Virginia die from COVID. We get cancer. Uh, we have problems. People die early. We have financial difficulties and struggles, and we don't get a pass on any of the struggles uh, that the rest of the world has to live with. But yet, at the end of it, we still choose God, not because what we can get out of it, but because we love him, because we want to have that relationship with him. And God prides himself in that. And so God's plan all along was to redeem mankind and to bring to himself a people that he could say, that's my people, and that we could say, that's my God. You know, imagine it's awesome for us to say, that's my God, but just as we're saying that, he's up in heaven saying, that's my people. He's looking at Maranatha Baptist Church tonight, and he's saying that. He, he's saying, hey, guys up here, now look now, these are my people. That's what God is up to. That's what he's been up to. That's what he was up to here in Exodus. Someone asked this question, who was the first missionary? We would... Folks would say, man, the Apostle Paul, man, he was the first missionary. No, God himself was the first missionary. God himself was the first missionary in the Garden of Eden. I'll remind you, there were two people. Uh, they'd been placed there in perfect conditions. They were in a state of holiness, but it was unconfirmed. It was untested. When it was tested, they would fail the test, and, uh, and their sin separated them from God. They tried to cover their sin, make coats uh, or sew fig leaves together, and when God came to look for them, to meet with them, they had hidden themselves. They realized they were naked. They did not want fellowship with God, but guess what? God still wanted fellowship with them he still wanted to redeem them to restore to reconcile them and he would do just that he would for the first time sh shed innocent blood uh, at his own hand God himself would be the first one to shed that blood to show them the high cost of sin and, and to remind them at the very beginning and to point to uh, another blood sacrifice that would be made one day but God himself he shed that first blood if you will and then Christ came along a couple thousand years later and shed the last blood that would ever have to be shed and so God was trying to bring people back to himself it's his heart. It's who he is. It's his nature. He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What does he want? He wants every person that's ever been born on this earth to know him as Lord and Savior, to spend an eternity in a place called heaven, and he wants us to be about this business. God's missions, plan, redemption. Now, we read a text here, and uh, and I just want to just... Some simple teaching this evening, I wouldn't even really call it preaching, but just a, some simple teaching uh, on, on some concepts of missions. Now, if there's, a, if there's a mission, somebody has to be the one that says what the mission is. And then whoever says what the mission is, then uh, he says, this is the mission, and if there's a mission, he needs a missionary. Somebody to do the work. Now, the missionary has to know what to do. He has to know what to say. So there's a mission, there's a missionary, there's a message. Well, then the, the missionary gets the mission, gets the message. He has to know who is he supposed to take the message to. Where is he going to go? 
Now, back in the Garden of Eden, God goes and he's going to go with a message and he's just simply looking for two people, Adam and Eve. That was it. He goes, he looks, he, he, he conducts, he speaks, he, he brings them, in fact, back to himself. And so now we look through our text here at the mission. Uh, God, what did God want to do? God wanted to re relieve the Israelites from under the bondage of the Egyptians and God wanted to pull them out, to bring them out, to have a people unto himself. And so that was God's mission and God went looking for a missionary. Now who was the missionary? Moses was the missionary. Now Moses had the question that we have when God gives us a mission. Uh, Moses said this, what am I going to say? Right? So this is nothing new. We're, we're still asking the same question these days. When the Lord wants us to do something, that's the first thing we ask. Lord, I, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? And, uh, and the Lord tells Moses exactly what he's supposed to say. Moses had a twofold message. One for the Israelites, one for Pharaoh. For Pharaoh, it was to let my people go. And it's interesting, God even told Moses, Moses, I'm going to forewarn you. You're going to go tell him, but he's not going to listen. Just tell him anyway. Just tell him anyway, Moses, he's not going to listen to you, but hey, I'm going to do my work, I'm going to pour out my wrath, and when it's all said and done, Moses, guess what? He's going to listen. Now, we're afraid to share the message because we're afraid, and, uh, and truth be told, a lot of times this is in fact the case. People aren't going to listen, but God just said, go ahead and tell it anyway. Go ahead and share. And so, the mission, the missionary... The message, who was the targeted group of people? In this case, it was the nation of Israel that were in bondage in Egypt. Now remember, we started with two people in the garden. We could look at the ark as an example. It was eight. So two, eight. Now we're looking at a nation. God's going after, a, what's he trying to do? It, it, it's, God has been up to the same thing ever since this thing started. And it's all been culminating. It culminates now to where we find ourselves. So all throughout the Old Testament, God had various purposes. He had various plans. He had things that he wanted to accomplish. And any time he wanted to do this, he would go looking for someone. He would look for a prophet or a king or perhaps a prophetess. And he would give his message to them and tell them to deliver the message to whoever it was that needed to hear it. Maybe it was a specific person. Maybe it was a specific group of people. But Hebrews 1, 11, Hebrews chapter 1 says, It's God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So the New Testament comes along. We looked at God's, uh, how God was working in the Old Testament and now the New Testament comes along and now God is not going to use a prophet. He's not going to use a priest. He's not going to use a king. He's not going to send an angel. He's going to send his son Jesus Christ and he is directly going to speak to us. And so now there's a mission. There was a mission when Christ was here. I love this verse. It sums up the ministry of Christ not completely, you can't exhaust the ministry of Christ in one verse because the only way to exhaust the ministry of Christ is right here. And that won't exhaust it, that's just all we know about it that God has chosen to give us. Here it is, 1 John 4, 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Now, what was the mission? Who was the guy in charge? Who was the one calling the shots? The Father was the one calling the shots. What was the mission? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Who was the missionary? The Father sent the Son. Now, what was the message? Oh, now, well, wait a minute. Now, this is a little bit different because in this case, the missionary was the message. He didn't have to be told what to say. He didn't have to be given the Word of God because he was the Word of God. And he is the Word of God. And so he, he was just living out. He's this book alive. That's what he was. That's what he is. And so God didn't have to tell him anything. He just showed up knowing it. They said, how did you know these things when he was a 12-year-old boy? How did you learn these things when he was an older man? Hey, he didn't have to learn it because he's God. He's living it. This is it. It's all about him. The mission. We have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the... Well, there's a mission. There's a missionary. There's a message. There's a targeted group. Who gets it? Back in the garden, he was looking for two. 
We get to Exodus, he was looking for a nation. But we get here now, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. He's looking to everybody. For God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But Christ only lived a short time, as we would classify it. Three to four years. He was crucified, buried, rose again, spent 40 days, ascended to heaven, and, and there he is, seated at the right hand of the Father, now making intercession for us, just waiting, just waiting for the hour when the Father's going to send him back to collect his bride. But what now? What now? You say, what do we do in 2021? Well, I'm glad you asked. Will you turn with me to John chapter 20, verse 21? John 20, 21. It's just wonderful that it worked out this way. I didn't plan it. It just so happened. But John 20, 21 says this. What's the plan now? Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. What did God send him to do? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And the Son said, just like the Father sent me to do my job, I now have the power. All authority is given unto me. All power is given unto me. And guess what? I now am the one that is the commissioning officer. And just as the Father sent me, guess what? I'm sending you. I'm sending you. And he said, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's why we're here. Because it's God's plan. It's Christ's plan. It's the plan. So now, there's a mission. What's the mission? To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's the mission? To start in Jerusalem and go to Judea and go to Samaria and go to the other uttermost parts. The mission is to be knocking on the neighbor next door, to be going across the street, to be going across the town and at the same time both, he said, in Jerusalem and Judea meaning at the same time to send missionaries around the world to places where we can't go. We're to go to the places that we can and we're to send people to the places that we can't. That's what we're supposed to do. Who's the missionary? Now that's a good one right there. You say, well, we had one of the missionaries last night. Yeah, we did. He's one of them. Will you look with me in Acts? Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. Give you just a second to find it. Acts 8 and verse 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, and look at this, except the apostles. Does everybody see it? The apostles were not scattered. Everybody else was scattered. The apostles were the leaders, the preachers. So Peter and James and John and, and, and those guys, you see, I didn't say it. The Lord said it. They stayed. Everyone else left. Look at verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere doing what? Preaching the word. Now that wasn't the apostles that went everywhere preaching the word because we've just been told that they, they, they didn't scatter. That was everybody else. That was just the, the other folks in the church. And so you know, what? why did they do that? Because when Christ spoke to them and said, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, for some strange reason, they thought that he was talking to them. And you know what? He was. He was talking to us. He was talking to you. There's people that God wants you to tell about him. God wants you to reach the folks you can reach. And God wants you to give to send missionaries to reach the folks you can't reach. We moved this year into a new house. 
down to King, closer to where I work, two miles from where I work. I have never lived so close to work. I'm telling you what, what a blessing. 1.7 miles. I could walk there if I wanted to. You can tell by looking at me, I've not done that very often, but I could. So I moved in a new neighborhood, and wow, what a terrible time to meet your neighbors. Nobody wants to, you know, you, I mean, it's like you, you know, you got the plague, and they don't want to see you, and so we tried to meet people, and I want to know where people stand with the Lord, and I was able to meet a guy across the street from me, and, and he was a member of a good fundamental Baptist church, and uh, neighbors right here are Christians, and, uh, and then uh, uh, across the way, I tried to talk to them, they were moving out, and the, I mean, they didn't say, get out of my yard, but they, you know, they, they gave me that body language of, I would really like for you to get out of my yard, so... So I did that. Uh, I had the guy right beside me. I never could see him. Didn't even know. Honestly, I, my wife and I would talk about it. We were there three months. I said, is there a guy that lives in this house? I see a lady coming in, and she comes in like she's been shot out of a cannon. Uh, and she opens the garage door from about 100 yards away. And she's hit that thing about 45. And she jumps up over the curb, and she goes in there. And the door's starting to come down before the car even gets in. I mean, I'm, I'm hamming it up a little bit, but not too much. One day, I, I had a Saturday, I had to go preach uh, somewhere on a Sunday, and uh, I had to leave early. I had to travel down to Georgia, and uh, it had rained a lot during the week, and so I was going to mow my grass, and I, I hated to do it, but I got up early on Saturday morning, and I'm out there in, in, in a neighborhood, hadn't lived in a neighborhood for a long time, and, uh, and I thought, well, I hate to do this to my neighbors, but I've gotten to mow my grass. So I'm like, do I let the grass grow too tall, or do I mow the grass at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning? So I opted for the ladder, and I'm mowing the grass, and sure enough, that dude that I didn't even know lived, uh, he comes out of the house in his house coat, and I thought, oh, this is it. I mean, you ain't going to come out and greet me and welcome me to the neighborhood, but you let me crack my lawnmower up on Saturday morning, and you're going to come give me the business, and at first I'm like, and then I'm like, wait a minute, you've been, you've been, now listen, dummy, I said, okay, Lord, give me, give me, give me something. And you know what? He didn't want to chew me out at all. His name was John. And uh, I turned the lawnmower off and I walked over there. And I could tell he was nervous and I, I stayed back. And he said, man, he said, I would shake your hand. I said, hey, I said, I, no, no worries, no worries. I said, I'm all sweaty. And I was. <laughs> I, mean, I look at work and I, I'm, I'm sweating. And uh, he said, I'm John. I said, John, I'm Ron. He told me just a little bit about himself. He said, uh, would you come over sometime back deck and uh, we'll have a beer? I thought, man, there it is right there. I was looking for the door, and man, he gave me the garage door right there. Boom. And uh, I said, John, I, I don't drink. So I'm, I'm a Christian, number one. I'm a preacher, number two. Now, I want to say I'm independent, fundamental Baptist, King James Bible preacher, but he wouldn't have any idea what that meant. So I just said, I'm a Christian, I'm a preacher, and I don't drink. He said, well, would, you, would you pray for my son? He said, would you pray for my son? Well, we've been talking about five minutes. And then he came over. He came over and he, and he gave me the fist. And then we're talking a little bit, and I'm telling him about what to do and everything. And, and he came over, he said, man, he said, that's, that's good right there. And he, and, he, and he gave me the fist again. And then before he left, he doesn't come over there and put his arm around me. Now, I ain't seen the guy for three months, but here, here's, the, here's the thing now. Here's the thing. We talked for about 15 minutes. I got a share of the Lord with him, but not, I mean, not like I didn't preach it at him. But I come home about three weeks later on Sunday, and there was an ambulance parked in front of John's house. And it was there for a while. And then cop cars came, cop cars came, and they were there for like two or three hours, and I thought, oh my, my first thought was his son, who he told me was, uh, had some addictions, and I thought, well, his son, man, his, his son's overdosed, that's what I thought, but that wasn't it, it was John, he died in his sleep, John had a, an aggressive cancer terminal, he never told me that, I thought John was okay. You know, if I could go back and redo that, I'd change a couple things. 
It could be that my next door neighbor, who God gave me a chance, I didn't know. Wouldn't that be a shame? If your next door neighbor or somebody you work with would stand before God and say, wait a minute, you never, I worked with this guy and he, he never even mentioned you. Wouldn't that be a shame if we don't reach the people that we can reach? I wish I could do it again. But you know the people that are living next to you, they're still there. You can get them. We've got to get them. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. We want to reach the people we can reach. And we want to send and give missionaries to the people that we can't reach. All at the same time. Because God has asked us to do it. Are, are, are very many of them going to hear it? Probably not. But I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because he told me to do it. And he's worthy of my obedience. And so that's why we do it. Because it's God's plan. And if it's God's plan, then I want it to be my plan. And we ought to want it to be our plan. Will you stand with me, please? Preacher, will you come? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the fact that you've laid it out so simply for us. Lord, we know what to do. It's not like we're sitting around wondering what to do. We know. Lord, would you help me to do it? God, would you help me to do it? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Preacher, you come, please. Amen. Even as the Father sent me, even so send I you. You see, we have a work to do. We are the people. We are the people that if, if the word of God's going to get out, it's been left in our hands. You see. How do we do that? We do it by word of mouth. We do it by what we give. Uh, we send people. We, we, give a, we live a testimony. We give to people that's going to go. You see, that's how we get out there. And we trust God the whole way. Tonight, I just want you to take a moment and do business with God. Ask the Lord, what would you have me to do? And if you're here tonight and you're not saved, you say, Preacher, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. Well, you, you can't do anything for God until, number one, you get on God's side. How do you get on God's side? You get right with Jesus Christ. You see, you give your heart and life to Christ. And he'll save you. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that's a promise of God. That's a guarantee. Uh, you can be saved tonight. You can know you're going to heaven. You can know your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. You can know that if the Lord returns tonight, you will go to, with him. If you've never settled that with God, that's the first item of business. Get it settled with God. I can't do it for you, but you can do it for yourself. You see, that's one worry you can do away with. You can know your sins are under the blood. You understand the next thing on God's appointed calendar is the rapture of the church. And when we see the times as they are, if you know anything about the Word of God, I believe we're standing right on the eve of the rapture of the church. It's too late after that. You'll see. Today's the day of grace. Now's the appointed time. Right now's the time of salvation. Tomorrow... We may be out of here. Amen. But while we're here as children of God, we got things to do. We need to serve God. We need to serve Him the way He tells us to serve Him. He will honor that. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, people praying, if you're here tonight, you got something you want to pray about, you can pray in your seat. You can come pray at the altars. If you want me to pray with you, I'll pray with you. If you're here tonight and you're lost, don't leave this place a lost man. You don't have to. You can leave here saved. You can leave here knowing your sins are in the blood. The Lord will save you today.
So do business with God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So tonight, if you're here and you need to do business with God, won't you step out of your seat and come and meet me here? And we'll take care of that. It'll be settled. Man can't do that for you, but God can. And God will. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for your sweet presence, your sweet spirit. We thank you, God, for the promises of the Word of God, how real they are and how sure they are. And, Father, we just pray tonight that all these prayers that's been prayed, that, God, we know you've heard them, but we ask you to answer them according to your holy will. And, Father, we pray for the souls of man. If somebody's here tonight and doesn't know Christ, I pray this will be the night they'll accept Christ. And I pray for those here that are Christians, that we will uh, seek God's face and, and get on the battlefield with the Lord, and that we might see souls won to Christ. Uh, Father, the time is drawing near, and now it is high time that we get about the Father's business. Thank you for faithful people uh, that are ready to do the work of God, and faithful people that's going to give, and, and missionaries are going to be sent from this place. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it'll always be until you come and take us home. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessing to just be a part of great things happening. Lord, save our people. Help our nation. Forgive us of our sin. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, it's been a blessing this week. It's been really good. And uh, at a time, I believe, when a lot of places say, well, it ain't worth the trouble. And it ain't worth the trials, and we can't do this, and we can't do that. Well, I think we have seen what we can. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this has been, uh, been very good. Uh, if, if we'll, this is what I've learned. If I'll hush and get out of the way and let God have his way, it always works out. Amen. But when I get to thinking, I get in trouble. And uh, so, uh, but God, God never fails. And we've, we've heard that this week. And. And we've heard this this week. God knows what he's doing. Amen. And so it's, it's, it's proof. It's just, it's just proof. And uh, so we just got to trust the Lord. And, and we thank you for being a part of that. And I trust you'll be a part of Faith Promise. Pick up your Faith Promise card and bring it back Sunday. We're going to collect them through the end of April. And so if you need to pray over a while, uh, then you pray over a while. Maybe God's already told you, I know what I want you to do. Then mark it and turn it in. The longer you keep it now, the more the devil's going to try to talk you out of it. Amen? That's right. So if God's already told you, mark it and turn it in. If you want to turn it in tonight, I'll take it. Amen? And then you can't change your mind. Amen? <laughs> but anyway, you pray over it. And God will bless that, I guarantee you. And uh, he will. And uh, if, not, if nothing else, you'll have satisfaction in your heart. Amen? that you've done what God would have you to do. Amen. Well, we'll have a conference next year. I guess you'll give me those dates before we leave, before you leave today. And uh, we'll do it again next year. But, but uh, you know, it doesn't end tonight. We're going to carry this faith promise, and then we take it all through the year, and, and we just see all kind of great things uh, happening uh, in the work of missions. And so... It's just been good, and we appreciate you being here. So I'm going to dismiss us in prayer, and uh, 
uh, uh, and turn you loose, okay? You keep praying for us, and then, of course, <clears throat> come to church. I know we're under different times, but <clears throat> uh, amen. God's been good, and uh, pray for our people. You know, there's people sick, and, and uh, uh, we face those things as well. We were never told that we wouldn't have hard times, was we? He was never told we probably you know we, we he never told us we wouldn't have hard times or times we didn't understand or times we wouldn't be a little fearful but he did tell us this i'll never leave you or forsake you i'll go with you all the way even unto the end of the world and that's god's promise and so we must stick to that all right let's look the lord in prayer father thank you for this great week we've had together here in this mission conference now father as we go from this place i pray that you'll work in the hearts of people today that lord this faith our faith promise will exceed father uh, what we can ever imagine and lord that we can be able to uh, send these missionaries out on the field and, and father what a joy it is to get their letters and and uh, many of the letters talk about hard times but even in the midst of those hard times they talk about the gospel going out and souls being saved people still being brought to christ because you cannot contain the word of god you cannot stop it and father we just thank you for that little bit of encouragement we get along the way and thank you, Lord, for the folks here tonight. It's been encouragement to see these folks in the house of God. And, Lord, you bless us when we gather again. Keep us safe until the end. And, Father, bless Help Ministries and Brother Ron and their ministry there. Meet their need, God. And, and Lord, uh, may they continue to grow and be able, Father, to uh, continue to send the word of God all around the world. Now, Father, bring us back here the next appointed time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wondrous revelation Whosoever